unanimous consent to address the House for five minutes. Without objection, the gentleman from Texas is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this afternoon, an extraordinary thing did happen. We had a vote on a supplemental with all kinds of strings attached to it to fund our troops in harm's way. The Democrats have the majority. They have the ability to pass that funding without a bit of help from the Republicans. Many of us on the Republican side of the aisle were quite concerned, however, with the strings, with the linkages that were made to this bill to help our troops do their job. One, for example, was that in the Second Amendment, which we knew would pass, the provisions there existed to create hard and fast deadlines for pulling our troops out of Iraq. We all want to see our troops home. We all want to see our troops back with us. And those of us who go over to Iraq and see them in harm's way, we long for the time of having them home completely. But the vast majority of those guys in record numbers re-enlist because they know they're doing good. They know they are making a difference. And when you go over there, you see it. Uh, in Kurdistan in December, in the northern area of Iraq, construction booming, things going well. We have made a difference with the surge. It is a profound difference. We have Al-Qaeda on the run. They're giving last-ditch efforts to try to stop what's going on. We have the Iraqi people that are there working for themselves, more soldiers, more police trained than ever. There's real good things going on. And were we to pass a supplemental that were link was linked to that second amendment with the time deadlines, the message would be a message of hope for all those who hate us and want to destroy us. And that is, if you'll just hold on a little bit longer, we will have the Americans put their heads between their legs and go cowering away as they did from Vietnam. We could have won Vietnam. We can succeed in Iraq. The, the great state of Iraq is so close to governing itself, just like John Adams wrote to Abigail. You know, what people have only dreamed of, governing themselves is so close within our reach. We, we can't give it up now. It's so close. Iraq is there. We cannot hand our enemies and the Iraqi enemies, the enemies of liberty, this kind of win. So we voted present. If the Democrats had had enough votes, then they would have passed the supplemental by itself, and it would have been linked to the Second Amendment that would have required the time deadlines for withdrawal and would have given hope. As it was, we couldn't vote against our troops, many of us, but we voted present. The first amendment that we took up this afternoon failed, so now we have got to come back with a clean supplemental to help our troops, and let's get the crud in there about the $52 billion tax hike at a time when the economy certainly can't af afford that. Let's get the, the linkage out to, to admitting and saying, oh, we're defeated, we can't win, giving our enemies a victory. Get all that stuff out of there. No more linkages like that. No more tax hikes. Just clean supplemental to give our troops the wherewithal to do what they need to succeed. That's the message we needed coming out of today. And that's why so many of us voted as we did. We voted for victory for our troops. And I will never forget the words of Travis Buford's mother. Travis was killed over in Iraq, and as I stood near his coffin with his mother, it was an emotional time, and I said, is there anything I can do? She gritted her teeth, and she said, tell the Congress to shut up and let the military do their job. That's what we need to do. Let the military have the wherewithal to succeed as they can without the linkages to failure. 
so that we can keep our head held high and what's more, perhaps go seven more years without being attacked here. Thank you. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Uh, Mr. McDermott from Washington.